Hi everyone, uh, it's me, Lucy, again. I'm happy to join you again for a new lecture in this module 6, lecture 2, and I will try to provide you an introduction to geographic information systems. Together, we will try to see what is GIS, what GIS does, how does GIS work, and why we use GIS. And finally, we will try to give some few tips about what to know before using GIS. As you have seen in the previous lecture, map making is an ancient practice, but the advent of digital technology in the 1960s have gave a boost to a transition in the field of cartography. Modern cartography found an essential tool in the use of computers, specifically thanks to the images taken by satellite in electronic form, it became possible to computerize the cartographic activities. In the 60s, the first GIS appears, a specific software created to mechanize the map making. These softwares open a new frontier, allowing to associate computerized cartography organized into thematic layers with database technology. Originally developed in Canada, GIS soon spread all over the world. In general terms, we can say that geographical information systems, GIS, are a special class of information systems that keep track not only of events, activity and things, but also of where these events, activities and things happen or exist. To better understand what we are talking about, it might be useful to analyze the GIS definition and acronym. There are many definitions of GIS. Different groups of people, for example the general public or the scientists, can find a different definition more useful than another. Here are some of them. So Longley in 2005 defined GIS and it is had to be more than a container of maps in digital form. And the GIS is a computerized tool for solving geographic problems as well as a special decision support system. In GIS, the G stands for geographical. Parker and Ensencio says that the purpose of GIS is to manage data about geographical location, including spatial relationship and spatial process. The I in GIS stands for information. For Parker and Asensio, GIS has the ability to store information to be used for purposes of analysis that are organized spatially. The S stands for systems. GIS operates through a group of five components connected to each other. They are the hardware, the software, data, procedures, and people. A specific and rigorous definition by Burrow defines GIS as a set of tools for collecting, storing, retrieving at will, transforming and displaying spatial data from the real world for a particular set of purposes. GIS are a particular type of information system applied to geographic data. For LODA, information system is any organized system for the collection organization, storage and communication of information. So a special information system is characterized by using, in addition to the normal data, called attribute data, also geographic data. The ability to manage and analyze attribute and geographic data is fundamental in situations which require to take into account special elements. Almost all of the data and information useful to any type of analysis or study has a geographical component. For the simple reason that they refer to a specific territory, location is important. It's an issue in many of the problems society must solve, such as deforestation, climate change, urbanization. So when making decisions about setting new facilities, protecting forests, safeguarding cultural assets, drawing administrative districts, Geography plays a significant role. This is where GIS come in. 
Georeference information systems improve efficiency and effectiveness of handling information about geographic objects and events. GIS digitally represent and analyze the geographic features present on the Earth's surface and the events that take place on it. It is important to not confuse the GIS with the software tools that simply treat data and represent them graphically. GIS have made cartography a dynamic practice. Maps produced with GIS not only indicate the position and shape of objects, but also allows us to outline the quantitative characteristics of certain phenomena and their interactions. Where traditional cartography allowed the collection of data in paper form, required a long time for processing information, faced more human errors, needed more updates and management efficiency, and has a low cost-benefit ratio, GIS allows the collection of data in digital format, minimizing time and improving the accuracy of the representation. With GIS, technology data can be managed efficiently and updated quickly and easily. GIS shows, in that sense, a high cost-benefit ratio. A specific and rigorous definition by Borough defines GIS as a set of tools for collecting, storing, retrieving at will, transforming and displaying spatial data from the real world for a particular set of purposes. In their handbook about GIS, Jonathan Campbell and Michael Shin introduces in Chapter 4 some key concepts about how spatial data are stored in a geographic database. According to them, GIS allows the superposition of various levels of information regarding an area. It is therefore possible to obtain a better understanding of the processes that affect the area and the factors that characterize it. Does this junction of attribute data into independent layers enable an extraordinary flexibility compared to traditional map? The key feature of a GIS is its georeference data capacity, that it is to give each element its spatial coordinate. Spatial data are stored in a geographic database according to two models of representation, raster data and vector data. The raster model is mainly used to represent continuous surface, for example, soil or rainfall. Data are stored by creating a regular grid made up of many small boxes called pixel. The values associated with each cell can express different types of graphical and descriptive information, such as colors, temperature, etc. The vector model is mostly used for representing discrete geographical features such as buildings, roads, etc. In the vector model, the information refers to points, lines and polygons that are encoded and stored as a collection of X, Y coordinates. Vectors models are used to store data which have discrete boundaries like country borders, land parcels and roads. In GIS, the G stands for geographical. Parker and Ensencio says that the purpose of GIS is to manage data about geographical location, including spatial relationship and spatial process. So if you look at the example you will review in lecture four, some the use of GIS we will review more in detail has to do with environmental conflict monitoring, 
to see and understand better this social phenomena, to be able to study it more, to give it more visibility and to support uh, all the communities that are engaged into these conflicts through mapping activities. Um, you have environmental participative monitoring, which is a, uh, an incredibly powerful tool for citizens to become actors of the environmental monitoring or the, on the place where they live. And citizen mapping, more generally speaking, and empowerment of communities uh, using GIS to empower themselves uh, to be actors of their uh, local lives. In the recent years, we have witnessed a burdening of application of GIS by non-profit organization. GIS provides them a tool able to generate and disseminate information, but also to produce special information shared with the participation of local communities, granting legitimacy to local geographical knowledge, as well as to official special data. In lecture number four, among the GIS example, we will introduce the Global Atlas of Environmental Justice that identify, is identifying and mapping over 2,000 environmental conflict all over the world. The HES stands for systems. GIS operates through a group of five components connected to each other. They are the hardware, the software, data, procedures, and people. Another important concept, looking at the question from another perspective, is activist knowledge. In the glossary developed in the EGOL project, as mentioned in module 1 of the Compass course, activist knowledge is defined as follows. Activist knowledge refers to all kinds of experience-based knowledge originating from activists in a broad sense, including community groups, NGOs, women's groups, trade unions, grassroots associations, and so on. It is generally opposed to official sources of knowledge stemming from academic, private sector, or governmental research organizations. It is based on the fact that activists tend to develop their own independent knowledge about situations they are concerned with, which may result in radically different conclusions than official knowledge. You can find out more at the links on the slide. In the field of environmental justice and sustainability, as we will see next lecture, an important other category when speaking about GIS, BUGY, or PGUS is the citizen science. The European Commission defines citizen science as, and we quote, citizen science is a broad term, covering that part of open science in which citizens can participate in the scientific research process in different possible ways as observers, as funders, in identifying images or analyzing data or providing data themselves. This allows for the democratization of science and it also linked to stakeholders' engagement and public participation. Depending on their personal interest, time and technological resources, the citizen decides on how to be involved, observing sitting sightings of birds, identifying galaxies or working out how to fold proteins, 
providing resources by lending computer time or direct financing as in crowdfunding of scientific projects. And we had that it is also how citizens, once engaged in research activity, are actually able to apply and use strategically scientific fields and tools for the benefit of a community. Let's now review the concept of VUGY, Volunteered Geographic Information. This phenomenon was named like this by Goodchild, who is recognized to be the world leader expert on VUGY. With this term, he wanted to recognize a special case of the wider phenomenon of user-generated content on the web. In his paper, Citizens as Sensors, The World of Volunteer Geography, he provides his definition of the phenomenon. For him, VUGY represents, and we quote, the widespread engagement of large numbers of private citizens, often little in the way of formal qualifications, in the creation of geographic information, a function that for centuries has been reserved to official agencies. They are largely untrained and their actions are almost always voluntary and the results may or may not be accurate but collectively they represent a dramatic innovation that will certainly have profound impacts on geographic information systems and more generally on the discipline of geography and its relationship to the general public. Thanks to open source software and cartographic tools available through the web, digital map prediction has become more democratic. User-friendly and or crowdsources interactive tools such as Google Map and OpenStreetMap tools we will review in Lecture 5, enable citizens to create their own maps and disseminate their observation and geographic knowledge. In the field of environmental justice and sustainability, as we will see next lecture, an important other category when speaking about GIS, BUGY, or PGUS, is the citizen science. The European Commission defines citizen science as, and we quote, Citizen science is a broad term, covering that part of open science in which citizens can participate in the scientific research process in different possible ways, as observers, as funders, in identifying images or analyzing data or providing data themselves. This allows for the democratization of science and it also linked to stakeholders' engagement and public participation. Depending on their personal interest, time and technological resources, the citizen decides on how to be involved, observing sitting sightings of birds, identifying galaxies or working out how to fold proteins, providing resources by lending computer time or direct financing as in crowdfunding of scientific projects. And we had that it is also how citizens, once engaged in research activity, are actually able to apply and use strategically scientific fields and tools for the benefit of a community. Another important concept, looking at the question from another perspective, is activist knowledge. In the glossary developed in the EJOLT project, as mentioned in Module 1 of the Compass course, activist knowledge is defined as follows. Activist knowledge refers to all kinds of experience-based knowledge originating from activists in a broad sense, including community groups, NGOs, women's groups, trade unions, grassroots associations, and so on. It is generally opposed to official sources of knowledge stemming from academic, private sector, or governmental research organizations. It is based on the fact that activists tend to develop their own independent knowledge about situations they are concerned with, which may result in radically different conclusions than official knowledge. You can find out more at the links on the slide. 